In the last video, we talked about the definition for electron affinity, and we also talked about group trends. In this video, we're going to get into period trends, but before we do that, let's go ahead and review the energy changes associated with electron affinity. So remember, electron affinity is referring to the energy that is given off when an electron is added to a neutral atom in the gaseous state. And so here we have a neutral atom in the gaseous state. We're adding an electron to it, and that would form an anion, and most of the time that's going to give off energy. And so when we're representing the energy change, energy being given off, we would use a negative sign. So the negative sign just means energy is given off. Once again, these values are in kilojoules per mole. So if you go down here to fluorine, you see a number here, right? And you see a negative sign in front of that number. And the negative sign just means that that is the energy that is released when you add an electron to a neutral atom of fluorine. When you have a very stable atom that doesn't want an electron, right? So in this example, you would have to add energy in order to force it to accept that electron to become an anion like that. And so since you're adding energy this time, right, you would represent that energy change with a positive sign. But since it's very difficult to measure how much energy it takes to do this, uh, most of the time you'll see textbooks just say the energy is some value greater than zero. We don't know exactly what it is. And um, actually, even more frequently, you'll see just zero written in parentheses. And so uh, when you see this, that means that it takes energy to add an electron. And so those, those atoms don't want electrons. And so we can see that down here. Neon does not have a, an affinity for an electron. We'll talk about why in a few minutes. All right, so now that we, now that we um, have reviewed uh, what these numbers mean a little bit, let's go ahead and think about the trend for a period. And we'll start with the, with the value here for boron. So boron gives off 27.7 kilojoules per mole of energy uh, when you add an electron to the neutral atom. When you go over here to carbon, you can see that that number has increased a little bit. So carbon gives off even more energy. And when we go here to oxygen, it gives off even more energy. And finally, of course, fluorine gives off the most out of those. And so there is a trend, right? As you move to the right, the general trend for electron affinity, there's more energy being given off, and so therefore a greater affinity for that electron. So as you move across a period, there's an increase in the electron affinity. Remember from the previous video that the idea of electron affinity uh, goes to the attraction between the electron you are adding, right, the negatively charged electron that you are adding, and the positively charged nucleus of the atom. Right, the more of an attraction the uh, the more of an attraction the nucleus has for the electron, right? The more affinity the atom has for the electron, and therefore the more energy that will be given off. And so that's just the idea of electron affinity that you have to think about when you're trying to explain these trends. So before we before we explain this trend, let's go ahead and fill in the valence electrons for the elements in the second period on our periodic table. So we'll start with lithium over here, which we know has one valence electron. And uh, this, this is going to represent the 2s orbital right here. So you have to already understand electron configurations um, to understand what I'm going to talk about here. So lithium with one valence electron is going to go into the 2s orbital here like that. Beryllium has, um, has two valence electrons. Electrons, right? So the 2s orbital is going to be completely filled for beryllium. We move over here to boron, right? Three valence electrons, one, two. The next electron has to go into a 2p orbital, right? So I have these three lines here representing the three the three p orbitals in the second energy level. And so boron gets one more electron. It goes into one of those p orbitals here. So these represent my p orbitals in the second energy level, and there are three of them. Carbon has four valence electrons, so one, two, three. And of course, using Hund's rule, we can't, we can't pair up electrons at this point. So we have to put our next electron into our next p orbital. Nitrogen with five valence electrons, one, two, three, four, and five, like that. Once again, following Hund's rule. Oxygen was six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Fluorine was seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So for the last two, we've had to start pairing things up. And finally, we get to neon with eight valence electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So to explain this general trend for electron affinity, let's look in more detail 
at oxygen and fluorine. So when you're talking about electron affinity, once again, you're talking about adding an electron to a neutral atom here. So if we were to add an electron to oxygen, it would have to go into one of those 2p orbitals. So this electron in magenta that I'm adding, right, I'm putting it into a 2p orbital for oxygen. For fluorine, same thing, right? If I'm adding an electron to fluorine, it also has to go into a 2p orbital. So why does fluorine give off more energy when you add an electron than oxygen does? Well, to, to think about that, let's, let's go through the factors we discussed in the previous video, right? So one of those factors was distance. What is the distance of that electron in magenta that you are adding from the nucleus, right? So the closer that electron you're adding is, the more of an effect the nucleus will have, the more of an attraction there will be between those two. In this case, distance isn't really much of a factor because in both cases, right, the electron in magenta that we are adding is going into a p orbital. And so therefore, the electrons in magenta are approximately the same distance from the nucleus. And so we don't have to worry about distance so much here. Uh, another factor we discussed was electron shielding, right? So electron shielding. And we talked about that in reference to inner shell electrons. So for both oxygen and fluorine, since they're in the second period, right, I didn't draw in the 1s electrons, but let me go ahead and put those in here. So there'd be two electrons, right, in the 1s orbital for oxygen, the same thing for fluorine. And these electrons, these inner shell electrons, right, would shield these outer shell electrons from the effect of the nucleus. But in both cases, we have the same number of inner shell electrons for oxygen and fluorine. And and once again, in both cases, the electron in magenta is going into 2p orbitals, similar distance, so the electron shielding is pretty much the same for both oxygen and fluorine for the magenta electrons. And so we really have to move on to the third factor, which of course is nuclear charge. Right? So what kind of charge does the nucleus have? Well, we need to look up the atomic numbers for these elements, and we know that oxygen has an atomic number of 8, Right? so meaning it has 8 protons in the nucleus, so it has a charge of plus eight in the nucleus. Fluorine has an atomic number of nine, so there are nine protons in the nucleus. And now we, of course, we see a difference. Fluorine has a higher positive charge in the nucleus, right? The higher the magnitude of the positive charge, the more this positive charge can attract this electron in magenta, right? So the higher the value for your positive charge, the more of an attractive force there is for that electron, and therefore the fluorine atom has a higher affinity for that electron and therefore it releases more energy and so nuclear charge um, helps to explain this trend that we see. So as you go across a period, you're always adding protons. And because you're always adding protons, you get an increased attraction for the nucleus, for the electron that you are adding. Therefore, you have an increased electron affinity. So let's look at some of the exceptions that we see, because we actually have a lot of exceptions here for, uh, for our period. And uh, one of them, of course, would be neon, right? So this breaks our trend, right? We're not releasing more energy. As a matter of fact, you have to add energy for neon to accept energy. An electron. And the reason for that is because you already have a completely full second energy level, right? You have these eight electrons here filling all of your orbitals. So if you try to add another electron to neon, it would have to go to the third energy level. And that, of course, is not favorable. Neon is perfectly happy and perfectly stable just the way it is, right? So that, that's why this is an exception. It's, an, it's already stable in its electron configuration. So adding an electron does not make it happy. All right, let's look at um, let's look at some of the other exceptions over here. So let's look at um, beryllium. Right, so that's also an exception. So the value of zero here that implies you have to add energy in order for it to accept an electron, and it's it's kind of a similar idea to neon here, except the the second energy level isn't full, but the 2s orbital is full. Right, so if you wanted to add another electron to beryllium, it would have to go into the higher energy two into a higher energy 2p orbital, and that's not as favorable. So beryllium is kind of already has. Uh, a stable electron configuration too, and so it doesn't want an electron, so you'd have to force it in order to accept one. And then, of course, for nitrogen, right, same thing. With an electron affinity value of zero here, you have to force it to accept an electron as well. And that's because in this particular electron configuration, right, you have one unpaired electron in each of your 2p orbitals, which is an unusually stable electron configuration. And so if you if you tried to add an electron, right, if you tried to force an electron in here, it's already happy the way it is. And so you would have to you would have to make it do that. And so again, an unusually stable electron configuration is the reason for nitrogen not following our general trend here for electron affinity. And so that's that's just some of the logic behind those exceptions. But
we have one more exception to cover here, and that is the difference in electron affinity between lithium and boron here. So lithium actually gives off more energy than boron does. So lithium has a higher affinity for an electron. And to think about why, we need to realize where that electron is going. For lithium, if you were to add an electron to it, that electron is going into a 2s orbital. For boron, if you were to add an electron to boron, it would go into a 2p orbital. And so when we think about these factors, right, let's first think about distance. All right, so the electron in the 2s orbital right here for lithium that we're adding is closer to the nucleus. And therefore the nucleus has more of an attractive force for that electron and the atom has more affinity for it. And therefore more energy is given off when you add that electron to the 2s orbital. The 2p orbital, right, so adding an electron right here to boron in the 2p orbital, that's further away from the nucleus. So there's not as strong of an attraction. And so therefore there's a lower amount of energy given off when you add an electron to that 2p orbital. So distance kind of explains it. If we think about electron shielding, so let's do that next. So electron shielding, um, you could think about both of them as being the same period, so your inner, your inner shell electrons don't have much to do with it. But once again, the distance and electron shielding play, play a role because um, if you think about the, uh, let me go back over here to this electron and boron, right? You're adding this electron to a 2p orbital. And again, 2p orbitals are further away from the nucleus. And so there's a little bit more electron density between that electron and the 2p orbital. I can think about these electrons and, and, and there's more electron density between that electron and the 2p orbital and the nucleus. And so therefore, it's more shielded. And so therefore, it's not feeling as much of an attractive force uh, from the nucleus. And so there's not as much of an attractive force. And so therefore, uh, you have a smaller amount of energy released when you add that electron. That's different from this electron here in the 2s, right? The 2s orbital is not as shielded. And so it feels more of the effect of the nucleus. And so there's more of an attractive force giving off more energy. So that takes care of electron shielding. Now, nuclear charge might make you think of something different because of course, boron has more protons than lithium does. And so that, and, and, and so that, um, that factor is overcome by the distance factor and also electron shielding. So those two turn out to, uh, to be the reasons for this exception that we see in the trend for electron affinity.